A friend posted this, and I thought it was worth reposting. Happy Friday. I feel this really spoke of him sharing with us. Sharon saw beauty in everything around her. An early morning sunrise, the birds singing as she relaxed in the backyard, the stillness of the water at a friend's lake house, the sound of music, a great play or a concert. She often talked about the beauty of Oregon and Hawaii. She loved Hawaii so much that is where her final resting place will be. It seems she was always going to a concert or play. One of her favorites was a show, A Night with Janis Joplin. Sharon was a big fan of Janis during her college years. I know she liked going to the Zachary Scott Theater and seeing the plays there. It seems she was always going to a new player concert every month. And I know Sharon is looking upon beauty right now that we can't even imagine and listening to beautiful music, the likes of which we have never heard. My fondest memories of Sharon are sitting on the back porch at the lake house, watching the dew lift and the steam rise from the lake, listening to the morning come alive as the birds began their morning songs and watching as they flittered between branches. We would watch in amazement as the squirrels ran across the canopy of the trees, welcoming the morning with a bark now and again. She would be reading and just relaxing and looking around at the beauty while sipping on her mimosa. <laughs> her sheltered Mandy would be at her side, ever vigilant, ready to protect Sharon from the ferocious squirrels should they chance to come down from the canopy. I would join her and we would sit peacefully while breathing in the crisp morning air. As we sat there in the stillness, I would sometimes bring out one of my flutes and play a song to welcome the morning, which Sharon really enjoyed. We would eventually begin to speak, but not so quick as to disturb the beauty of the moment. We talked about all the wonderful wines that were out there to try, even though I'm not a wine drinker. She was always looking for that really sweet wine that I do like, so she would tell me about that. We talked about what she had been reading. We talked about our love for animals, and Sharon had a great love for animals. She was always trying to reunite lost animals with their owners, or helping to find a home for them. She was a foster mom to cats and dogs. Her dachshund Zelda was a foster that she ended up keeping. I remember Sharon saying that Zelda came to her when she needed her most. Zelda and Mandy were always close by her side. She was always posting cute pictures of Zelda. You will be happy to know that Zelda and Mandy are going to good homes. We also talked about the good times in our lives and the bad times. There was always more good than bad. In reflecting on this, I can say I never once heard Sharon complain about the bad times. As the morning sun continued to rise, we would get around to talking about our kids and family. Sharon loved her daughter Karen deeply and was proud of all her achievements. Sharon, Sharon would post links to Karen's articles or tell us what she was working on next. Sharon referred to Karen as the light of her life and always said Karen was the best thing that ever happened to her. Sharon loved her son-in-law Charlie and was proud of him also. She would tell me what a great photographer Charlie is and he certainly is. Sharon was one happy and proud mama when Karen and Charlie it's her words, finally, got married. <laughs> Sharon loved her younger brother, Brian, very much, and they were very close. Brian and Sharon were a comfort to each other over the years. They had a strong bond, and Brian was here when Sharon needed him most. He flew in on a moment's notice from Washington State a month ago to be here with her. I know Karen has been glad to have him around also. It was during these early morning talks that I learned Sharon had a love for those around her and was compassionate about people. This showed in the great work she did here at the hospital. She always had the best interest, interest of the patient at heart. She was also patient and kind. She was passionate about anything <coughs> she did, especially golf, if you ever played golf. 
Even as a patient herself, I would hear her remind the nurse to make sure and document this or do that so it didn't go against the hospital. Even last week, I heard her mention to the nurse, be sure and document this. Sharon was always thinking about others, even in her time of need. Sharon loved her friends and all the crazy fun they brought into her life, especially if Lynn, Kathy, and Beth were involved. <laughs> I know there were trips to New Orleans, but it seems nobody wants to speak of them. <laughs> not to me. So maybe we can get some stories at the reception today. <laughs> Sharon loved being outdoors. She also loved having other people share the outdoors with her. We played golf together a number of times, and it was a risk she was willing to accept. Because you see, playing golf with me can be a bit risky. I remember one time I sent a golf ball right into the, the golf cart that she was standing right by. <laughs> we had a good laugh at that. Was that the last time we played together? Oh no, not at all. She faced playing golf with me like she faced any adversity head on. <laughs> we shared many laughs there on the golf course, mostly at my expense. Together on the golf course we learned that trees have an appetite for golf balls. <laughs> More balls went to the trees and were never seen again. Some of the trees didn't like a particular brand of balls, but it would spit them back at us. I only knew Sharon for a moment, but in that moment, Sharon taught me much about life. She taught me that you should always love others and always give them your best. She taught me about what it meant to have passion for what you do. She taught me patience and to follow through on my golf swing. She taught me what true compassion for others was. She taught me that what you see in life is more about your perspective and attitude than about what your eyes see. She taught me to enjoy life while you can, and that if we didn't have the bad times, we wouldn't know the good times. She taught me unconditional love. Sharon taught me that in times of trouble, you should always face them head on and fight the best part you have. And Sharon, you always hold a very special place in my heart. The memories we shared and made together will remain with me forever. I know I will see you again one day, and we will have some catching up to do. Until then, just remember I love you, and won't miss you. Here. Come up. Thank you, Keith. That was beautiful. I uh just give me a second. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, you know, she mentioned her Facebook page, and it's funny because, you know, thank God Mom moved here about five years ago to be to be here, but I still had to read her Facebook page to keep up with her. What we would say, um, what's Mom doing this weekend, or, you know, oh, is she on the continent? Is she in <laughs> Why did you know she was going to Long Island? Why did she decide to go to New Orleans? Um, you know, she really, um, she really knew how to, she really knew how to live, and that's why it seems so ironic that she went so young or early and uh, and kicking and screaming, you know. Um, it was a failure fight because uh, one of us to give this to you because I keep on messing with it. It was a familiar fight to her because, as I'm sure most of you know, she beat breast cancer in the 80s, and, uh, and, uh, and this time it, uh, it took a few years to get her. And um, I know that a lot of you. Uh, were around her um, in her last days here, um, and uh, a lot of you weren't able to be um, 
but we found it fitting that her final day on earth was Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing she ate was king cake. <laughs> um, and um, and that she was asleep when she went. And I was asleep next to her. And she went so quietly it didn't even wake me up. And I think that's how she would have wanted it. I don't know if we plan or if we choose our time to go, but if we do, that seems like that would have been her choice. Um, you know, I don't need to necessarily tell you what kind of a person she was, what kind of a friend she was, um, co-worker, mentor, family member, but uh, I can tell you what kind of a mom she was. I probably don't really need to tell you much about that. <laughs> she was um, loyal and always uplifting and always encouraging. Um, she moved all the way across the country to be here with us. Um, I thank God every day that she wasn't in Oregon during all this. And some of my favorite memories of her were the ones we made recently. You know, all those posts about the Zach Scott Theater, she and I would go once or twice a month, it seems. Um, we loved most of them. Um, I remember we almost walked out of God's spell at the Long Center and, and joy, just took great joy in trashing it every time we saw it. <laughs> um, and uh, I went to New Orleans with her last summer and we watched Wicked, um, which is her favorite, one of her favorites. And we laughed so much, you know, we just laughed so much. And it, I think one of the things I remember most about her is when she smiles, you know, the sparkling eyes, the ding, <laughs> it was always the sound I heard in my head whenever I would see her smile and see her picture. Keith did a great job of summarizing everything that she loved about life and her passion for so many things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's amazing that we were able to do her memorial service here at the hospital because she spent over half her life in hospitals like this one and it was her passion and you guys were her life and to be able to have it here um, where she felt at home enough to, to go she chose to go here um, is just a a really comforting tribute. Um, it does, there's nothing that feels foreign about it. Um, you know, we've spent the last couple of years hoping that this wouldn't happen. And all of a sudden it's here and there's a wave of words to say. <laughs> Just not enough time to say it all in. But we have a lifetime to say goodbye to her as well and to talk to her. And we also have uh, the reception later today where we I can't wait to hear your stories and feel your hugs and talk to you some more. And I'm going to turn it back over to Keith. I just want to say if the best way to honor my mom is to just eat life the way she did and breathe it in. Like she did, there's a strong wind blowing outside today, and I think that that's from her. She um, she couldn't breathe in the end, and I think this is her way of breathing for us. And um, I just thank everybody for, for being a part of her life. She loved you all so much. Thank you.
I'm Hugh Brown. I'm the uh, Chief Executive Officer here at um, St. David's Church and Hospital. And uh, I'm sorry to have to meet any of you this way um, in this situation. But I, I hear a lot of sniffling. But then when I when I think about Sharon, it's hard for me to, to hold the tear for more than just a second. Because she was one of the major sources of energy on our staff. There probably was not a single person in the 450 people who work here who either didn't know her or didn't know of her. And I can promise you that there are thousands of people who have benefited from her. She came to us about five years ago when we were desperately in need someone, of someone to come in and help us on our journey to uh, provide exceptional care to every patient every day. And she was passionate about that. And I remember in the early days when we really had a, a quality program that was a little bit adrift. It didn't have the structure to it. And she walked in as if she had been doing this all her life, as if this is what God had intended her to do, to come to Georgetown and help us serve our community. And I recall the wise counsel I would get from her many, many times. She had that gentle way of coming to my office and saying, hey, Hugh, do you have a moment? And I always knew I needed to make a moment, <laughs> I had it or not. Because she didn't, she didn't uh, take advantage of those times to, to talk idly. She would she'd break the ice a little bit, and then she'd sit down and talk about something that was on her heart. Not just something professional, but the, something that was on her heart about the way that we needed to improve to take better care of patient, patients. We've achieved a lot of success in this hospital in the last several years. National recognitions, quality and safety recognitions. Sharon was quality and safety. You know, there's always someone who's a driving force behind that, and Sharon was a driving force behind that. There were many instances, um, and I could I could list off at least ten. I was uh, as I was reminiscing over the weekend, where Sharon would come in and she'd say, you know, I think you need to look into this. And that was, my, that was my guidance that I needed to stop what I was doing and look into that. And to put the resources, because she had a natural instinct for what the patient needed. And so um, she touched all of our lives in a very personal way. Well, what you all can know is that she has touched thousands of lives and, and saved thousands of lives based on the work that she did, based on her commitment to, to this, to us, and the way that she led us. Both of you used the word passion. Kathy Converse emailed me last week, and she was trying to put together a, um, a list of the first word that pops to your mind when you, uh, when you thought about Sharon. And my first word was passion. Passion for life, certainly. We've all experienced that. Passion for all of those people around her. Passion for doing the right thing every single time, even if it came at great personal cost. There was never any hesitation on her part to put forth whatever effort was necessary to make sure that the next person who showed up in this hospital got the care that they needed. And she controlled a lot of that. She influenced an awful lot of that. We will be, we are hands down a tremendously better organization and better able to, to fulfill our mission because of having Sharon in our lives for such a short, short time. It's our honor to have this here. I, I'm so glad you have given us the privilege of doing this. I. Uh, um, I was one of the first people in the room the morning that Sharon passed, and Karen mentioned that I uh, wanted to have a little, maybe have a little service in the chapel, and I immediately said, that, that's not going to happen, and it's not a big enough chapel. We'll have to rent out a church if we're going to do that. But many, many, many hours Sharon spent in this various, very room, sitting at a table. We set up our plastic tables here, and we would, we would debate and argue and report on the things that were important to Sharon, and that was taking better care of people. So thank you for the privilege. Thank you for luring her down here for her last years. <laughs> she told me in the interview, I'm coming down here. I need a job because my daughter's down here and I want to live in and I want to live in the Austin area. It has been a blessing. It, and her life will be a blessing to many. Um, I would encourage as many of you as you can to come over to Sharon's house afterwards and there'll be some food and uh, and we can we can do some laughing at that point. And you may not be aware of it, but we have a whole group of people on the fourth floor. We're video, video, live video broadcasting this uh, this service up there because we knew we would have an overrun of, of people here, and that is just a <coughs> tiny bit of the number of people that she so positively influenced. So Keith, thank you for doing this. I know you are her friend, uh, and also as in your role as a, a chaplain here at our hospital, and so that's very important. And you're going to share with us uh, some music? Yeah, I'm going to play something real quick. Very good, but thank you all very much for giving us the honor of coming and helping us honor the memory and sharing to the wonderful day. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I wish we had time for everybody to come up and tell a story about Sharon, but um, like you said, please come to the reception. Um, we expect to hear a lot of good stories there. Um, before we go, I just would like to, this is one of the flutes that I would play when Sharon and I were sitting outside, and I just like to play Amazing Grace. Oh, yeah. back. We haven't run it before. Oh, here, so yeah. we put it back on there. You'll see something. 